Yay! Story time. Elmo just loves story time. And I hope you like story time too. So grab your Mickey and your Minnie and your Elmo and it's time to know that, you know, it's been a world. World play day. God, I'll put this guy to, get to bed once he starts talking. Uh, it's been a world of fears, a world of tears far too long. And the Lord wants to wipe all of that away. So come on in with us and uh, sit down and hear uh, the glory of the everlasting gospel that shines uh, Christ's glory upon himself because he is the glorious. He is all that he said he was. And uh, it was a real eerie, ominous uh, time right then because uh, gross darkness was covering the world. It, uh, there wasn't even a ring around the sun like an eclipse would have. It was like, where did it go? <laughs> and it was gross darkness. And right after uh, it, that led up to the point where Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, this day you shall be with me in paradise to one of the thieves. Now at first, because of his uh, hurtful pangs of death, um, our master of the uh, of obedient children, his faithful few, didn't feel like listening to the confession of that believing thief. But when that uh, criminal reached out for salvation, his er ears perked up so that he could bring deliverance unto him. Now, several times before then, Demas ha had been uh, leaning towards belief in Christ and love after hearing him preach, but only in those last hours did he really tune in with a whole heart to the master's teaching. For when he saw the brave way that Jesus faced death on that cross, that thief couldn't resist the conviction that he really had been the son of love. So it was also this out of the world hour when heaven's alarm was continually sounding off quietly for multitudes of heavenly hosts were then surrounding our altogether lovely one while uh, bringing Emmanuel tons of uh, angelic support lifting him up nor were those high flyers happy at hearing sounds of strife uh, that were coming forth from the extremely rude and hot-winded multitude in behind the soldiers who had gambled over uh, Christ's cloak. After all, those cruel-hearted souls were more malicious than any uh, uh, sadomasochists ever could have been. And in the natural, it was then becoming an ugly scene that would become far uglier as the ugliest one uh, that anyone could ever make before losing their breakfast. So uh, many scribes, elders, they swarmed around like ants. And it was, uh, it, it was terrible. But one thing for sure, the Lord's earlier time of grief, back in the Garden of Gethsemane, by comparison, because his shock had been wearing off and he was feeling uh, more of the pain uh, it was haunting him. But um, uh, that was just a rough breeze compared to the turbulent showers of hostilities pouring down in unrelenting torrents upon that beaten brow of our endless example of loyalty and goodwill. And uh, that depressive flood of humanity's abusiveness would then also be trying to wipe away all of our fast-fading Lord's uh, energy to turn his obedient spirit into even a spiteful one that might even curse God. That was Satan's big wish and uh, would never happen. But, but the, uh, for the brokenheartedness of our king of harmony was going through stuff that never should have happened to a dog, even one foaming at the mouth. And the stars of God were ablaze with love. And uh, like jo Jehovah Nisi, the banner of love over all of us and his son, so also was there a blaze of love over him. And the one spot for Jesus was, uh, uh, the one bright spot was coming from those hosts. No one else could see it on the scene, but he could discern. And uh, as they worshiped him, their praise flowed sweetly with the kind of soothing tempo that usually comes forth from a master conductor's fast fluttering baton as a seasoned orchestra, orchestra plays. And in spite of their most wonderful melody being unable to be heard by anyone else thereabouts, the angel's harmony uh, to Yeshua was so utterly beautiful that even the call of the wild would easily have been tamed by such. 
And since the uh, quick increase in cloud cover was thicker moment by moment, a very black kind of darkness then began covering that uh, eerie place of the skull. As a matter of fact, at that pass over time, a very strange blackened fog of cloudiness was seen by startled uh, souls all over the place, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles away even. This was happening all over because uh, this gross darkness was stretching apparently across the faith, face of the sun. And, uh, but the real truth behind that happening was that an archangel of the Almighty God was somehow causing our uh, sun to totally disappear within the abandoned skies over our whole entire world. And it was a manifestation of the Word of God. But all of the above was to be expected from uh, the messianic prophecy of Ezekiel that prophesied God's future words to his dying son, where it is written, and thus is it written in the word of God. When I put out your light, I'll cover the heavens and make its stars dark. I will cover the sun with the cloud, and the moon shall not give her, her light. And the bright light of heaven shall I make dark over you and bring darkness across the land, said the Lord God Almighty in Ezekiel. And then the sixth hour of the day was finally coming forth. Uh, although the darkness and confusion of nature made it look like an incoming premature chaotic night instead of daytime, but it was day, fully day. Uh, and meanwhile, in the midst of Jerusalem were many inhabitants becoming uh, overcome with utter terror and uh, and anxiety, uh, for the streets were increasingly dark, beloved, uh, and uh, they were gloomy. And some people therein felt their way about, while others seated on the ground with their heads veiled. They were striking their own breasts hard, or they were going up to the roofs of their houses to look at the strange sky while bursting into some uh, real bitter and frightful lamentations. Even the animals thereabouts were uttering some mournful cries and they were hiding themselves. The birds also flew low and many of them even fell to the ground. Talk about eerie, eerie. And even Pilate, uh, Pontius Pilate wrote uh, about the supernatural event of the ages when he wrote unto Caesar and these are his words. He says, I suppose your excellency is not aware that in all the world they lighted their lamps from the sixth hour until the ninth. And the moon, which was like blood, did not shine all night, even though it was full. And the stars and Orion lamented over the Jews because of the transgression committed by them. The lights had gone out. And he said, when Jesus was crucified, there was darkness over all the world. And the sun was obscured for half a day and altogether hidden. And the sky above appeared most dark while it was yet day. And he added great detail to the report. He told the emperor, and the stars also appeared uh, at one point, but no luster was seen in them. And the moon not only lost its brightness, uh, it, later it was as though the edges were tinged with blood. But none of the things that Pilate was, was bearing witness to was too shocking to the Jewish believers of our in, inheritor of heaven. Even the prophet Amos had long ago foretold all this. For he wrote, It shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, I will make the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in broad daylight, and I will turn your Passover feast into mourning, and all your sons into lamentation. And I will also bring sackcloth, since it shall be made like mourning for an only son, and its sudden end like a real bitter day. In other words, we're uh, witnessing and re resounding all over the circle of earth. Even the ancient historian Paulus Orius, O-R-I-O-U-S, he did write this. When Yeshua HaMashiach was hung on his cross from the sixth hour of the day, the sun was obscured and loathsome uh, night suddenly overshadowed the land. Then an impious age feared an eternal night. Moreover, it was clear that neither the moon nor the clouds stood in the way of the light of the sun, because the moon was only fourteen days old and was far from the sight of the sun and the stars uh, throughout the entire sky. 
shining in the hours of the day that were exactly like some terrible night. Accordingly, it was impossible for an eclipse to have been behind that supernatural blackout. And this he wrote. Science also bears witness to the supernatural. Every astronomer, uh, astronomer w would also agree as well that no solar eclipse possibly could have caused such darkness during any former Passover festival. For at that time of the year, the moon is always full. It's a saying. But any kind of eclipse could only happen when the moon cycle is brand new. And that's a fact of science. They, were, they, they, they figured that out a long time ago. Now, aside from all of that, the longest recorded eclipse throughout all the history has only lasted seven minutes, people. Could not have been an eclipse. Seven minute eclipse. This was all day long. <laughs> so praise the Lord. The, the God was having his way in the storm and the clouds of darkness were but dust under his feet. And he put out the lights. So gross darkness versus the light. That was it. Without any heads up at all, some echoes from Isaiah rippled around our surprised world. For that prophet foresaw that our sun would be uh, darkened in, in his going forth. So it, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, here's three, four witnesses all saying the same thing. Twas therefore a paranormal time for a manifestation of really weird. So for a total of three hours beginning at noon, all over the globe, it came about that our gloomy sky rapidly changed into something abnormal, bottom line. And even much of our Milky Way seemed to be mopped away uh, as it spilled over into an unseen void, just as Amos predicted when he said, During the day of doom there would be a sunset at midday, and earth would be overshadowed in darkness under full light. And as the sky grew darker, many stars all of a sudden appeared to cast forth strange and lurid light, which swiftly caused a dusky kind of dawn to transform into a premature dusk, way out of sync with time's cycle. For that unheard uh, of nightfall would end up lasting until our Lord passed into glory. And multitudes were worrying about, about much, beloved, and neither was there anyone uh, in all of Israel who thought it was normal for day to become like the deepest part of night. And for those witnessing Christ's devastation, beloved, the thought of it being uh, coincidentally happening couldn't stick around long. As such, both men and beasts all over were being struck with utter terror, far too grievous to describe. But for uh, believers in Yeshua, none could ever possibly shake the truth away from them that God's eternal grace is immeasurable, could never possibly be measured, and his uh, mercy inexhaustible, just as his peace always remains most expressible. And uh, there was an abrupt hush sweeping through the crowd. Oh my God, it is amazing. So. Make sure you come on back next time you hear.